next topic we're going to examine is that of infrastructure components. Here, we are going to look at three in particular, a firewall, access points, and a wireless LAN controller. Smaller networks will have, besides a router, merely a firewall and probably a single access point. The larger the network, the more access points you need. And when you have more access points than you can manage, it's time to invest in a wireless LAN controller. You've seen the basics of these three components. Now let's look at some details of these. So there's three basic aspects of the previous diagram that we want to focus on here. Firewalls, access points, and wireless controllers. Firewalls can be hardware and or software based. Cisco has hardware devices that serve as firewalls. You may have seen Windows firewall inside of Windows. Windows Server, Windows 8, Windows 10, whatever. For the exam, the most important thing is to understand the function of a firewall. There are future Cisco certifications that actually address the different types of firewalls Cisco has, but we won't worry about those here. The biggest function of a firewall is simply packet filtering, usually near the edge of a network. In the previous diagram, the firewall was located next to the external router because the job of the firewall is to basically look at incoming traffic and then filter it to make sure that harmful traffic does not reach the internal part of the network. And it doesn't matter if the network is wired or wireless. The other job of the firewall is to make sure that traffic from inside the network does not make it out if it's not supposed to. This could include confidential information, things like that. And there's different ways to sort through that. The two biggest types of filters you will see in firewalls are ports and protocols. Firewalls are usually built to filter traffic by port number and or protocol. For example, if you do not want a certain port allowed in your network, maybe it's a port for a game or something like that, you can set your firewall to block all traffic on that port. If for some reason you need to block a certain protocol, you can do that too. Many firewalls perform what is called stateful inspection, which allows a firewall to capture historical information on packets and then use that to filter packets. To give you an example, firewalls can monitor TCP traffic. And let's say all of a sudden you get a spike in TCP traffic. That could be a form of a denial of service attack, also known as a DOS attack. In that case, the firewall can be set to start filtering out those packets. Now to get a little bit more detail here as far as where you should place a firewall in a typical network, and by typical I mean a smaller network. In a larger network, you're just gonna take what you see here and multiply it, but the device is gonna sit at the outer edge of your network and connect you to the internet in the case of a small network is a router. Any device that actually connects to the outside world directly, we call an outside zone. We're covering zones here. The inside zone is going to have devices that sit in the internal part of your network, such as your switches, and then devices you have connected to those switches, such as your PCs, servers, printers, things like that. And that is known as the inside zone. Now in the middle, you've got your firewall. Now the firewall is usually going to sit in a logical area called the demilitarized zone, or the DMZ for short. Think of the DMZ simply as a go-between between your inside zone of your network and your outside zone. Now what besides the firewall should sit inside the DMZ? Basically anything that is going to need to talk to both the inside and the outside portions of your network. Here's one example. If you're hosting your own web server, that web server is gonna to need to talk to both the inside part of your network as it gets data, and then displays the data to the general public through the outside portion of your network. So the web server should sit inside the DMZ. Now, if you're thinking, how do I lay this out physically? Don't worry about it. The DMZ is just a logical part of a network design. Physically, your web server can be next to your firewall or it could be several hundred feet away. The physical part doesn't really matter much. So when we're talking about zones here, we're talking about logical zones and the firewall actually sits inside the DMZ. 